Hey, this is Hellbent, and welcome back to part two in the Pixel Search tutorial. In this one, we're going to continue on and add a few things to our script and to make it more usable for you as the person that's going to be writing this. So, in order to follow along with this tutorial properly, I've created a little tool that'll help us uh, with. Um, making sure everything's working properly. So in, if you don't already have it from the first part, in the description of this video there's going to be a link to a paste bin page and just go to that paste bin page and copy this into a new script. So go to the bottom raw paste, press Control A to highlight all of the text and then Control C to put it into your clipboard and then put this into a new script. You can call it whatever you want. You can call it pixel search target, pixel search tar uh, helper, whatever you want. When you run it, you'll get this and just provides an environment for us to do uh, testing. Okay, so <clears throat> what we're going to do in this one to start with is this works fine um, where we search for a target just by pressing our hotkey but chances are you're going to want to have it uh, repeating this action over and over again. So the first thing we're going to look at is putting this inside of a loop. So if you are familiar with the way I normally do things, I usually type out all the code right here. So that way it takes a little bit longer, but in the end you see everything as it gets typed out. And um, one of the things I don't like to do, I don't like it when other people do it to me, so I don't do it to, to you, is pretty much everything involved in this script I discuss about it I don't I never say you know you see this bit of code you know this this code that's down over here that's doing something crucial vitally important don't worry about that I'm not going to be explaining it but don't worry about what that does just worry about this stuff I hate when people do that to me so I don't do that to you so I make sure everything I talk about is things that you're going to be able to understand and duplicate for yourself and actually take it and manipulate it in other ways whatever way you want to so let's go ahead and um, what we're gonna need this time is a hotkey that's gonna start our our pixel search and then another hotkey that's going to stop that search or that loop <clears throat> so I'm just gonna use number pad 1 and number pad 2 for my hotkeys you can use any hotkeys that you want um, whatever makes sense for you I'd probably use F1 and F2 and things like that more often, but I have to press the a, two buttons in order to actually use them. I have to press a function key and then the F1 and F2. So I don't usually like using the function keys. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and start our loop. In order for us to come into our uh, start our loop and then stop it, um, what we're going to do is we're going to I'm going to create a variable that I'm just going to call stop and I'm going to set its value to the opposite of what it is. So I'm going to say stop equals not stop. So if stop equals, no, 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 I can't do that in here. I'm going to set the value of stop to zero in here. And in here, I'm going to set the value of stop to one. So when so the number pad one is going to start our script and it's going to be the thing that has it looping over and over and over again for our pixel search. As soon as we press number pad one, it's going to take this variable stop and put a value of zero in it. And then what we're going to say is while um, not stop, which is basically the same as saying while stop has a value of zero or has no value. Um, another way I could do it is while stop equals zero while stop equals zero do this stuff here so it's going to loop over and over again whatever code we have within these braces so as soon as we press number pad one it sets stop to zero and then it'll allow us to loop over and over again later on if we press number pad two it's going to change the value of stop to one so stop will no longer equal zero so this while loop will get exited so now that we have the loop set up, what we'll do is we will let's do a, let's I usually like to do a little uh, test to make sure my code's working before I uh, put in a whole bunch of things in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable up here. I'm going to call it i, and I'm going to set its value to zero. And then in here, 
I'm just going to display the value of i and immediately afterward I'm going to add 1 to the value. So this way we can test to make sure the the loops working properly and our ability to exit is working properly. So I'll go ahead and run this and alright so if I hit number pad 1 we should get a tool tip that has a number on it that keeps growing as it loops over it and there we go and if I hit number pad 2 it should stop. Alright perfect. We don't have a way out. If I actually wanted to get rid of the tool tip when I press stop I could put down here um, tool tip with just a comm or just tool tip and now if I run this again when I hit number pad 1 the tool tip will start and then when I press number pad 2 it will disappear. Okay so we know that the loop is working as expected it's starting when we press number pad 1 and it's stopping when we press number pad 2 so now we'll add in our pixel search and we will let's I'll use the same variable as I had before AX is going to be if it finds the color it'll store the X position in AX and it'll store the Y position in AY I'm gonna set the position to be the whole the whole of my screen so because I don't know the exact dimensions of my screen I'm just gonna use the built-in variables that contain that will it'll look up the size of my screen or the resolution of my screen and whatever the maximum whatever the number is it'll store those into the variable so um, my width is about 1366 so if I type in the built-in variable a screen width it'll grab that value and it'll have a value of a 1366 for my screen whatever your screen is it'll grab that value so a screen width and so that's going to be the the end X position and the end Y position is going to be the bottom corner which is going to be a screen height or the value stored in a screen height. Okay now that we have that we need a color so let's use the I'm going to use the default color that this starts with because I know that as I'm running this other program it's going to constantly cause this one to get run over and over again so I'm just gonna grab this color but <clears throat> unlike in there where I can just type I don't need to specify that it's a hex um, hex number I, here I do so I need to put in zero uh, X and then those that six digit number our hexadecimal number um, then the variation I don't I don't want to have a variation I'm not gonna be looking for any variations but I do need fast and RGB. Okay, so we have it looking for that color on w anywhere within the screen. I already have it set up to look on the screen, not just the active window. Um, now I need to test my error level. So I'm going to say if not error level, which is a built-in variable that grabs the that stores the error level so <clears throat> if it finds the color it'll put a value of zero in it if it doesn't find the color it'll put a value of one etc etc so I'm gonna say if not error level but I could just like up here where I could do uh, not stop I could do this the same way so if error level equals zero so depending on if you find it easier to read it like this go with this way if not you can just go with uh, if not error level okay and then if it's not an error level what we're gonna do is we're just gonna have it click at that location now I'm gonna change I'm gonna change the size of this to 30 pixels by 30 pixels just so it's a little bit easier for you to see it okay and now that I have that I'm going to offset the position that it finds by about 15 pixels. So I'm going to say uh, temporary x or tx equals ax plus 15 and I'm going to do the same with temporary y variable um, that equals ay plus 15 and then I'm going to have it click. 
at AX, no, 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 TX, and TY. Okay, now, depending on, do I want to wait a little bit of time? Do I want it to run as fast as it can, et cetera, et cetera? These kind of things I might want to consider. Um, so, for example, if I want it to click and then wait a little bit of time, I might put in a little bit of a sleep delay afterwards. Um, if I want it to, I'm not sure if this will actually make it run any faster, um, but if I put up at the top of my script, set mouse delay to negative one this might make it a little bit faster I'm not positive I know that for just the click command it will make it run faster but I don't know how much it's gonna make of a difference because I don't know how long this particular action takes in milliseconds so I'll leave I'll comment this out for now but we'll, we'll check afterwards to see if we can get any performance enhancement by adding this in um, <clears throat> to give you an idea, if I was to just have this set, forget about the pixel search and everything like that, if I just had this in a loop where it's just clicking at an X and a Y location, um, it'll top out at about, uh, I can't remember if it's 30 or 60, I think it's somewhere around 30, somewhere between 30 and 60 clicks per second. By adding this in, I can get up to about 100 and 30, 140 clicks per second, and then there's other ways that we can increase that as well. But uh, so, like I said, I don't know if this is going to play that much of an impact because of the pixel search. But uh, we'll try that afterwards. So I'm going to go ahead and save this and run it. And now, if I press number pad one, it should move my mouse and it should start clicking on that. But I need to reset this again. If everything works properly, it should start chasing that around. And there we go. So wherever the block moves, it's attacking it. Now, that's it where it moves every single time it clicks it. Let's see how it does with move mode. So we can see the counters going up every single time it clicks on it. So that looks like, I don't know, about five, five or six clicks per second it looks. Um, so I'm going to hit number pad 2 to stop it, or whatever number key you have, and I'm going to change, I'm going to add this in now and see if we can see any improvement. So if I hit, I'm going to reload this, get the count back to zero. Alright, so if I hit number pad 1, um, I'd say, yeah, that looks like it's it's significantly faster by using that set mouse delay. It looks pretty, pretty significantly faster. I also, now I don't really recommend doing this, but depending on how fast your computer is uh, and perhaps how much memory a particular application is going to need, what we can also do is we can change the batch lines. Now, the batch lines, how it works is it'll, every, <clears throat> by default, It'll run, execute all this code for up to 10 milliseconds, and then it'll w sleep for 10 milliseconds. And then it'll go through it again for 10 milliseconds, and then sleep for 10 milliseconds. This way, other things on your computer can use that other idle time. But if we change the batch lines, we can make it so that way it we can adjust it to, you know, perhaps it's using two-thirds of the amount of time of the processor time, or... Uh, 10 90 percent of it or 99 percent so what we're, we can do is we can set the batch lines to negative one which means that it's not going to sleep at all it's just going to keep going non-stop but this is if the application that I'm using takes needs that memory then it's going to slow it down so in fact what might end up happening is this program here, even though this doesn't take a lot of memory, it might have it be impacted by having this script run with, with uh, the batch line set to negative one. So if I hit number pad one, we'll see how it does. So I'm not sure if I see much of an improvement over where we had it just uh, 
doing with just the set mouse delay. I could be wrong, but it, I don't see like it's like night and day. It's not as I don't see as big of a difference as I did with uh, when we just incorporated that. So I'm gonna rather than eating up all our memory or the processor time, I'm gonna comment that out. Okay, so that's adding it into a loop. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and we're gonna change it where we have a set color here and instead we're going to use a variable and we're going to use another hotkey to actually set that variable so I'm just going to create a variable called the color and maybe I'll come up here and I'll give it a, a default color to begin with so I'll say the color equals whatever we have over here so I'll, I'll take this color here and I'll use this as the default 0x and then that color right so when it starts when the program starts that's gonna be the color it's looking for but I don't want it to keep it that way what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna add in here another hotkey I'm gonna use number pad 3 but like I said, you can use whatever hotkeys you want. You can make modify them in any way that you need to. And um, let's see. I'll just add in my return right away. Okay, so let me see. What do I need? First thing I need to do is, in order to get the color where my mouse is, I need to know where my mouse is. So the first thing I'm going to do when we press number pad 3 is I'm going to say uh, mouse get position. So I'm going to get the position of my mouse, and I'm going to call this, uh, I'm going to use two new variables. Now, these variables, they shouldn't cause me any problems with any of the other aspects of my program, but I'm just going to create new variables just in case. I'll use uh, px and py, so pixel x and pixel y, because that's what I'm going to be looking for. <clears throat> Now that I know where my cursor is and that's stored in a variable, what I can do now is I can do a pixel get color and I'm going to store the value of whatever color that it's going to get into our variable that we created up here. So I'm going to store that value into the color. And where I'm going to be looking at, I'm going to be looking at whatever we got for our PX and our PY. Let me make sure I have everything I need there. I think I need to add RGB. Yes, I do. Okay, so I'm going to add in RGB. And I think that, that should work properly. Okay, so now we have one hotkey that's going to start looking for a color, and if it finds it, it's going to start clicking. We have another number uh, hotkey that if, we, if the script is running, it'll stop it, and another one to actually grab a color off of the screen to use in our pixel search. So by default right now, it should be set to click on this. So if I hit number pad 1, it goes and starts clicking on it. If I now, what if I want to change this color to change it to something else? Uh, let's go with uh, 33FFAA. Okay, so we have a new color now. If I press number pad 1, it's not going to do anything because that's not the color we're looking for. So if I hit number pad 2 to stop the script, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop this. And I'm going to hover over it, and I'm going to hit number pad 3, which will grab that pixel's color. Okay, so now my script should be updated that if I press number pad 1 now, it should start chasing it. All right. I'll change this again. Let's go with uh, red. If I hover over it, press number pad 3, that should update the color. And if I press number pad 1, it should start... Oh, okay, so it's chasing uh, this color up there. This is uh, this thing right here, this is actually something we're going to be going into in the next part. How to deal with it just constantly sticking with one color, where we might want it to do something besides just stay on a single color. All right, so I'm going to have to change this a little bit. So I'll do, uh, let's do EE. -E. 
zero 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 so it's mostly red slightly different shade of red so I'll store this as the color with number pad 3 and then if I hit number pad 1 it should just chase that around okay so there we go we've put it into a loop and we've made it so that way we can grab any color that we want off the screen alright um, I'm I do have things that I still want to cover in this but I'll let you guys decide whether you want another part to this um, and I'll come back I'll come back in a couple of days maybe a week or two and I'll check the the rating of this video if this video has a significant or, or a, a th if it meets my my expectations of uh, the ratings then then I'll create a third part. In other words, I'm not going to waste my time. So if you want a third part, make sure you rate the video. Um, if you don't care, don't worry about it. But don't leave it to somebody else because they might say think the same thing. And uh, if you really wanted a third part, then you might not get it because there wasn't enough ratings. Um, but yeah, that's it. I hope you enjoyed, and perhaps I'll see you on the next part.